Hi guys, Paul here from PA Brew News. Got two beers here. Boop boop. KBS. Whoa, KBS. 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 One from 2016, one from 2017. So let's see how these have aged over time. The 2016 is 12.4 and the 2017 is 11.8. So there we go. Black cap 16. Uh, the tan, the normal kind of uh, bronzy color for the 2017. I'm just going to use a regular one. Leslie's right here, but we use a regular one. So 16. And I've had the 15 on the channel that I was vintage, vintaging for a little bit. Label out, folks. Log Yard Brewing Company Glass 16. Save a couple things in here so the lady can have some too. 17, label out folks again. Throw it in here. Alright. Already, already, this head is slightly darker. One thing I can notice already, you might not be able to notice it as much on the camera, but this one is already a little bit darker, the 17. And actually not, not keeping that head retention as much as well. It's something interesting. But, appearance-wise, other than that, Caramel pepper, uh, caramel ruby hue at the uh, pinnacle of the glass, same kind of thing. A little bit more alcohol-like sticking from this one. Let me waft this one around a little bit, see what we got going on. There we go. Let's, let's do it. Alcohol legs definitely sticking, but more is actually sticking to this glass than this one. But that might be individual classes. Who knows? Let's get a rum on the 16. Cheers. Mmm. Wow. Uh, a lot of uh, raisins, uh, bourbon-soaked cherries almost, basically. Bright caramel, peppery bourbon, cherries, chocolate, baker's chocolate, dry baker's chocolate. <sighs> Part two. Wow. This is a very different smell. Very dark, dark chocolate, dark chocolate, baker's chocolate. Low key. Don't really have that a, a bright cherry coming out of it. More soft. My caramel, peppery bourbon is more softer. And that. Dark chocolate's more the star of the show on this one right now. There is a lot of ethanol alcohol still wafting through the glass, bringing dark fruits with it. This one has more raisin, but there's a nuance of that cherry. The cherry is really, really bright in this one. Not, not as bright as adding cherry to something, but it is in there. Wow. This one still seems very bright and lively for being the 16. The 17s smell a little bit broodier, which is weird because the ABV is higher on the on the 16. So let's get a taste. Let's get let's 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 cut off all this nonsense. I mean, no one's gonna watch the video anyway. That's app for the channel, but I appreciate the people who do. So cheers, 16. Char, a little char in the back, rising up a little bit. Baker's chocolate. Burnt, burnt sugars, walnut husk, bright caramel peppery bourbon. The dark fruit's not as, as big as I thought it would be. Warming right here, coming down in that 12.4, but very, very approachable. Bit thin, definitely a bit thin. KBS is known to be a bit thin. It's just the way it is. This one's that almost getting to that medium side of a medium body. Minerality in the back of the palate now coming up, mixing with that char. For just a standard aged, so it's going to get drier and drier, and this one is on the drier side. I was hoping those dark fruit tones would get into the taste a little bit more, but they seem to be pretty subdued. Just a different kind of complex chocolate, burnt sugars and baker's chocolate wafting through the palate on this one. And getting into that mineral state and char on the back. So let's, after I've talked a little bit, let's get a sip of the 2017, which is still looking darker as the head goes. So interesting. Cheers. Pinpoint to the nose, though. Dark chocolate. 
baker's chocolate. That caramel peppery bourbon is very subdued. Dewed as well. There's dew. Not Mountain Dew. Okay. So this is weird. Very approachable for 11.8. It would probably give me a little bit at the first. But I've already been acclimated to the first one. But, wow. This one just tastes like an Imperial Stout. An old Imperial Stout. An aged Imperial Stout. Dark. Charry. Not that much caramel peppery bourbon at all. This one has that bright caramel peppery bourbon. Surprisingly, still. Wafting through the palate, bringing those burnt sugars. Bringing that walnut husk. A little bit of morality. Or a charry bit. Biggest chocolate. This one right here, though. It's got that dark chocolate. It's got those broody tones. Little soft rose char. It doesn't have any bright characteristics to this beer at all. It's very broody and dark. It's interesting. So one is very bright. One is very dark. It's yin, yang, wang, a dang, dang. So how about we throw it together? Could be. And uh, we'll see what they, they taste like together. All right. This is some gray land right now. It's already on a lot of our glass. It's the top of the mouth open all the time. That's nice. Okay, here it is. It's an aroma. A lot of baker's chocolate, a lot of roast. Baker's chocolate roast wafted through here. There's nice caramel peppery bourbon wafting through it now. Not as robust as the first original one, but it's still there. A lot of roast, a lot of char, a lot of chocolate. So, Woo a lot of alcohol legs. It's nice ABV. Very fashionable. Cheers. Smooth, 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 smooth. Oiliness. Wafting around gave it a little bit more body because both were probably out the medium side of a medium. This is on the high side of a medium, not a little creaminess because I've wafted around, get a little head mixed up in there. The joys of a, a cask pull tight sparkler. Yeah, oh yeah. Wow, nuances of caramel, peppery, bourbon still kind of spiking through, spiking through this creaminess. That it has spiking through that chocolate, that dark chocolate, baker's chocolate, spiking now, now boom, boom, boom. You get a little of that caramel pepper bourbon, start wafting around the palate. Still a little bit of morality, char is nice. Honestly, I would pick, if I really had to, for KBS as it aged. The 16 is aging great. Um, I'm losing a lot of the barrel character and a lot of other different nuances from the 17. The 17 is just uh, really nice dark chocolates, baker's chocolates, and char. That's really what I'm getting out of this one right now. So it is, in, it is interesting to see how these beers are changing with time. I don't have any more of the aged KBSs. This is it. So, ha-ha. <laughs> an era has come to an end here at PA Brunners because they're, the, they're all out of the dungeon now. Uh, definitely like the 16. I, like, I think I like the 16... Even better than the Kuvi. So, probably still give it this a 9 out of 10. I'll probably give this one an 8 out of 10. And I'll probably give this with a Kuvi a little 8.5, which is interesting because it's kind of meshing the two scores together. This is just a really nice Imperial Stout. Now, this is still a really nice Burn Barrel Age Imperial Stout. And this one has the best of the both. So, there you go. If the bourbon was coming up a little bit more of a shining example, Lifting everything back up, I would probably give this one either 9.2 or 9.5, but probably about an also a 9, but it's not. It's still kind of muddled through all, all the things and things are going together. It is enjoyable, don't get me wrong, but I'd still give the 16 the higher score, 9 out of 10 still. It's still holding that 9 out of 10 category because the, the flavors for an aged beer that I am getting are really, really nice. 8 out of 10 for the 17. Like I said, if you have a 17, give it a go. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. But right now, this bottle, this time, this age, this variant is losing the barrel character and just becoming a dark chocolate char bomb this one's still going good 
It's uh, it's not as deep, but the bright notes are really enjoyable. So the only sad thing is I was actually hoping to get a little more dark fruit out of these, but I'm, you know, it was there in the aroma. It didn't translate to the taste, and that's so fine. So I'm going to pour a little bit more into each one of these. So I have a little bit of goodness, and I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Yeah, what a smash. Ooh, I wish you could see that. I'm smashing them together. Smashing the, uh, the streams together. Don't cross the streams. And then they want you to cross the streams. Very confusing film. And it's not a horror film, Josh. <laughs> there you go, I got it all. So there it is. So this is for, this is a big old glass. She probably wants to take the small glass, but that's fine. But from a small glass, I'm going to say cheers. Mm. The Paul's Bay Brunis. Bye-bye. Watch that finger. Here it comes.